Your mileage may vary. How often to clean? Well, I can't be bothered going through all of this because I'm going to forget most of it, so let's just focus on the summary of each thing. Daily is to do all these things. Weekly is to do all these things. Pro tip to avoiding cleaning the microwave all the time. Just put all your food... No! Damn it! Ah! Ah, do so good. And then you distract me by making me think of something funny or silly to say. This is on this is your fault. So it's, it's not me. You're the ones doing this. It's not me. That was a practice round. <laughs> anyway, I support Mr. Beardsky's interpretation of this. Uh, you just pick one from each category, right? R right? Yeah, also the blue ones are optional. Well, that's kind of funny because red is optional too. A cool guide on neuroplasticity. How to create a new you. Basically, set goals, recognize triggers, make conscious decisions, seek pleasure and reward from healthy pursuits, new pathway is strengthened as a result and therefore a new healthy habit is formed. To prepare for such a thing, avoid substances that provide unhealthy rewards. Learn to live a comfortable and responsible life in which your brain is rewarded by healthy pursuits. Exercise, try yoga and meditation, seek support from peers and take care of yourself. Don't get too tired, too hungry, too lonely, too angry. Oh, that's my favorite kind of life advice. Hey, you're doing something? Well, don't do it. There, it's solved. For brain training, if we don't learn new skills, we don't engage our brain's plasticity. Highly focused activities help keep the brain in good shape. So why not try Try learning a new language, a career change, logistical puzzles, or new environments. That's right, it's not stupidity to dive into a live volcano, it's called brain training. A cool guide to Hawaii. A great example of the fact that we are on uh, mountains. That's what we're on. It's not land, it's mountains. Oh my god, this is uh, a lot to read. Uh, we're just gonna pick out some of my favorites. Okay, so how some music bands got their names. For ABBA, it was an acronym of the first letter of the band members' first names, Agnetha, Bjorn, Benny, and Anna Fried, arranged as a palindrome. The Beatles was renamed from The Quarrymen by Stuart Sutcliffe and John Lennon, and spelled Beatles as a tribute to Buddy Holly and the Crickets, with a pun on beat. Yeah, Bee Gees, Aussies, yeah! Originally named the Bee Gees by DJ Bill Gates. Wait, what? <laughs> the owner of Microsoft was a DJ? After the shared initials of Barry Gibb and his mother, Barbara, with Gates and Speedway promoter Bill Good, who were managing the band. The reinterpretation as Brothers Gibb came only later. Uh, Daft Punk, 1993. Taken from a negative review of Darlin, Ben Gelter and Herman Christo's previous band in Melody Maker, which described their music as a daft punky trash. Wow! Well, if naming yourself after critics' comments is the way to get famous, <laughs> you can call me accident. Let's go Hootie and the Bluefish. Named after the nicknames of two of Darius Rucker's college friends. One had a round face and glasses like an owl, and the other had a chubby cheeks like a blowfish. Again, finding fame off the insults towards others. It's... <laughs> Pink Floyd in 1965, renamed by Sid Barrett from the tea set after the names of two Piedmont blues musicians who records he had in his collection, Pink Anderson and Floyd Council. What, not even like an insulting alteration of these names? No wonder Pink Floyd wasn't famous. A cool guide to dress codes from most formal to least formal in 1920s. You know, for a day and age that was still inherently racist at the time, they really loved their blacks. We get that talk that, oh, men back in these days were true men, unlike the sulky soy boys of today. But I guarantee if you brought the wrong hat to your formal evening event, ooh, look out. Mm, stop it! You're doing fashion wrong! No! A cool guide to the pastries calories. I am seeing a lack of Vegemite scroll on this little diagram here and therefore it is unworthy of my eyes. It is also dangerously comforting that some of these are less than 300 calories. I'm gonna gobble every single strawberry tart I see now. A cool guy to Catholic hierarchy. So there's God, and he diddles the Pope. So the Pope diddles the Cardinals, the Cardinals then diddle the Archbishops, who then diddle the Bishops, and they diddle the Priests, and the Priests diddle the Chut- uh, so the people. Great athletes versus average animals. In a 100 meter dash, Usain Bolt is technically slower than a butterfly. Damn! I, you know, make fun of him for being technically slower than a butterfly, but I'm also slower than Usain Bolt, so I can't really talk smack. Best performer is the Peregrine Falcon, who's cheating because they fly. 100 meter freestyle swim? Congrats, Eamon Sullivan. You could catch up to an emperor penguin and beat them for their money. Best performer is a sailfish, again cheating because they have a sail. Long jump! 
Bob Beeman can jump not good enough because everything else beats him. Haha, <laughs> humans suck. Free diving. William Truebridge succeeding in something many people do when they fall off a bridge. Okay, I quickly just converted that feat to logic. Uh, 123 meters, dude. That is, you're not human. I jump. I jump. I jump. All right. I jump. I jump. I jump. I jump. Javier Sotomayor jumping eight feet. Pit Wait, Pitbull can jump 14 feet? Wow, I am far more afraid of Pitbulls than I ever was. Informal dinner place setting. Wait, wait, this is informal? Oh no. Oh, I've worked in hospitality and this is how we've always been made to set it all out as a formal setting for events and oh no, oh no. Formal dinner place setting. Jeez, what? Hang on, why do you need so many glasses? A champagne flute, red wine glass, white wine glass, sherry glass, water goblet. I need to know what places go out this hard for your dinner setting. This is, it's a lot. I, <laughs> every space agency is proposing its own cleanup plan. Europe plans to send up a satellite with a giant net to snare the debris, basically playing space Pokemon. China proposes a satellite with a laser that will break floating space junk into smaller and less harmful pieces. The US plans shooting gas to slow the pieces of debris, causing them to re-enter the atmosphere, straight up farting into that endless void. Japan proposes using an electric tether, a cable moving through Earth's magnetic field, to generate an electric current that will send space junk back into the atmosphere. Here is the electrodynamic tether, and here is the spacecraft. Air purifying plan to keep in your bedroom. Alrighty, I know what I'm going to Bunnings for this weekend. Time to turn me into a little bit of a plant. <laughs> a cool guide of the most popular body weight exercises. Ooh, oh, I gotta save this one. This looks like fun. And by fun, I mean I'm probably going to die attempting the first three rows. Look, I am proud of the fact I can one leg squat, so I'm really curious to try that next step, which I, I'm get, if I'm guessing right, should be the dragon squat, which, oh man, if you look that up, that's... <laughs> <laughs> oh no. A cool guide to visualize from which states the US is importing its food. So essentially, when the global panic begins and you're desperate for sustenance, uh, head on down to Mexico. I'm sure they'll happily treat you with open arms by the way we treat them when they get immigrated to America. That said, if all you love is cereal, then Canada's probably your best bet. A cool guide about the four main predictors of divorce. Oh, this one's interesting. The four horsemen, criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and stonewalling predict early divorcing 5.6 years after the wedding. The average couple waits six years before seeking help for marital problems, which uh, is kind of bad considering the four horsemen seem to get to you first. Emotional withdrawal and the absence of positive effects during conflict discussions, shared humor, affection, empathy, predicts later divorcing its 16.2 years after the wedding. And half of all marriages that do end do so in the first seven years. Note that's the ones that do end, not just the ones that exist. For all you nihilists out there, 69% nice of conflict in relationships is about unresolvable perpetual problems. Six percent of these perpetual issues involve gridlocked peak couple conflict. I'll be honest, I have no idea what that's implying. 85% of stonewallers in heterosexual relationships are men. Wow, who saw that coming? 80% of the time, women bring up issues in heterosexual relationships. Wow, who saw that coming? Dr. Gottman reports that stable marriages have a 5 to 1 ratio of positivity to negativity during a conflict, whereas an unstable relationship is 0 0.8 to 1. Oh, that's not good. I think it should just be pointed out too. Uh, this wasn't just one man, Dr. Gottman, Dr. John Gottman. It was also his wife, Dr. Julie Gottman, who was doing all this with him. Like they were a team. I just noticed a lot of places that refer to this research that the Gottmans did. They never really acknowledged that it was the Gottmans. It's always Dr. John Gottman who did all this. Like there's a reason they were able to complete 12 longitudinal studies with over 3000 couples. And it wasn't because of one man's just hard work. Yeah. A field guide to procrastinators. The cleaner. Before I can start, I need to do some laundry. Then I have to sort my sock drawer, organize my music collection, and clean up my desk so I have room to work. The panicker. Oh my god, 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 I'm done! The list maker. I shall make. Can you guess? Come on, guys, guess. That's right, a list! The napper. Enough said. The side tracker. Well, I need to work on the thing that is due tomorrow, but I just got the greatest idea for this other thing that is due next month. I'll work on that first. The social sharer. Here's the picture of me not doing work. <laughs> the internet researcher. Lol. This video of a cat swimming in a kiddie pool of spaghetti is such a crucial part of my research. The snacker. I just need a little snack. The gamer. 
Hold on, I'll get to work after I take care of some things in my town. I, I just need to finish arranging some furniture, catch a bug, pull the weeds, and water my flowers. The Watcher. Yeah, right after this episode. The Delegator. Okay, team, let's split the work in half. One of you take one half, and the other take the other half. Sorry, just call that a uh, management. The Perpetuator. Well, I was going to start 30 minutes ago, but now it's getting a little late, so I'll just have to start on it tomorrow. A cool guide to provisioning a World War I dreadnought battleship. Wow, that is a lot to, like, take care of throughout the entire voyage as well. Like, it's not just stacking it all away and bringing it out for lunch every time. You gotta, like, keep it chilled, keep it safe, and, you know, safe from, like, getting off and unhealthy to eat. 60 tons of potatoes! 1,000 boxes of cigarettes. Yeah, wow, okay, look, it's, it's the sign of the times. Oh, well, if you start from the right and go three rows in, there's actually 120 pounds of your mum being served. Gold purity chart. I can't help but feel like they only introduced the term carrot to make it more fancy than just saying a percentage of gold. Someone is free to tell me otherwise what the actual reasoning for carrot is, but for now I'm going to believe my truth is the truth and I'll double down on it. Remember to never talk to the cops. One, contacted by the police. Stop! <laughs> Don't talk alone. Even nice cops are always gathering information to land on charge, including people you care about. You are not required to speak with any law enforcement officer or agent. Oh boy, this is gonna start some arguments in the comments. Two, cops are allowed to lie. It is legal for cops to lie about what the subject of their investigation is. Agencies at all levels frequently share information with each other and there are very few rules as to what how cops can ask for that information. Uh, I'll be honest, I read three at like face value for a second. I thought it said, call a lawyer best friend. Like, who has best friends who are lawyers? I'm not rich. You have the right to consult an attorney before talking to law enforcement or deciding whether or not to talk to them. You have a right to have an attorney present even if you volunteer to do an interview. Four, need help? Your local National Lawyers Guild chapter can provide assistance in finding political attorneys in your area. Reach out ahead of any attempts at repression and make a safety plan with trusted ones. Learn about histories of grand juries and political movements. Cops aren't your friend. The life of a typical American. Going along week of the year and down by age. Got some colored bars there to symbolize your career and retirement, elementary school, etc. So here's the week when you can drive in most states in South Dakota. Here is the week when you can vote, smoke cigarettes, fight in war, and be tried as an adult. Yay! <laughs> Here is the week when you can legally drink. Here is the average week a woman has her first child. This pink is the week when men first marry on average today. And further all the way back in like early 20s was the 1960s. But also the average amount of time a couple who divorces will stay together. Seems about right, less than, what, seven years? Also, average length of time someone stays in a job. Yeah, for some jobs, it's like being a renter. But also, the average life expectancies? Men, what are we doing? Guys, stop it. B be healthier. Oh, but holy, wow, average life expectancy in Sierra Leone? That's a country in West Africa. Man, that, wow, mid 40s? A cool guide to rhythms. Hot dog, grape soda, apple pie, hot fudge sundae, coconut shrimp, rice crispy treat, chalky strawberry, cinnamon, oatmeal, milk and cereal, avocado toast, cheese ravioli, strawberry ice cream, chops and chips and guacamole, tater tot casserole, pepperoni pizza. Nailed it all in one take too. Wow. Yep. A cool guide for understanding how much 